Hello everyone who's watching us in the archived version. I'm here with international master Nico Georgiadis. Uh, hello Nico. Uh, pr everyone probably knows him from my channel, but those who are new, he's a beast. He's from Switzerland and he is uh, a very talented player who apparently studies in university and uh, is also taking the right choices in life, not only in chess. So, um, let's have a look. What we are here to do? We wanted to look at the Carlsen Karyakin game, right? Yeah, there is something I also want, was thinking about uh, mentioning at the beginning, but I, I don't even remember what it was. Probably, it's, as my parents used to tell me, if you don't remember, it must uh, have not been that important. So, um, this is the first game. Carson was playing with the white pieces. Karyakin is black. And what we are going to attempt to do is uh, not necessarily to show uh, the best lines. We both didn't look with the computer. We just want to uh, uh, find some interesting uh, things that uh, happened and maybe summarize it from our own perspective. So hopefully it won't be, um, the level won't be too, too low. So, okay, Carlsen started with d4, knight f6. This, do you know, did you see this uh, joke on Facebook that was going on? Like, I saw maybe 10 different uh, people writing a post about it. The Trump Posky. Yeah, yeah, I saw it. Oh my goodness, yeah. I, I'm, or, it, everyone just mentioned it repeatedly. Yeah. So, yes. And now d5, bishop takes f6, g takes f6, one of the main lines. Anything uh, to say about it? Well, actually, I don't know anything at all about this line. Yeah. Yeah, I play d5 sometimes and I'm supposed to know, but I can't really say that I do. I mean, my theoretical knowledge is that I can play e6 here with black and it should be fine. Knight c6 is probably a more ambitious move. And uh, yeah, I believe uh, that uh, it's kind of o probably objectively okay because Karyakin played it relatively fast. And now Carson was surprising with the move bishop b5, which was not played a lot of times according to the database as long as far as i remember astane during our stream uh, as he mentioned so bishop b5 is relatively rare and now e6 okay black is attacking on c5 wants to yeah. get back the pawn and it wasn't possible to play b4 right? yeah i was we were analyzing it in the stream and we couldn't really determine what's going on um, and by the time we we were like in the middle of the analysis, already three more moves have been played. So, a5, c3. Yeah, I expected it to happen, actually. Yeah, but I'm, yeah. this position is very unclear to me. And uh, I, it feels like black should have some compensation that's uh, enough or even maybe more than enough. But it's hard to say. Uh, Without uh, pre preparation, it, was, it would have been difficult, actually, to play yeah. black. Yeah, yeah. If this is not worse for white, then it's definitely a practical choice uh, to surprise the opponent. But I have a feeling it's, it should be objectively worse somehow. For white? Mm-hmm. That, that's my feeling, though. Uh, I, can't, I can't say I... Uh, yeah, possibly. Otherwise, Carlson would have played it. Yeah. So, c4 is probably the most principal move, trying to take on d5 and creating this uh, weak structure. As we explained in the stream, this structure is quite bad. So instead, d takes c4 makes more sense. And the end game should be okay for black with a pair of bishops. So um, now knight d2 again makes a lot of sense, developing and while avoiding the queen exchange. Bishop takes c5, the most logical move, developing a piece while regaining the pawn. Knight gf3. And so far, the, I don't think anything special happened. I think now the moves start to become a bit more interesting, yeah? Yeah, yeah exactly. So, yeah, just I didn't cool. guess the move castles. I thought maybe Blackwood... C3. C3 looks, looks Yeah, natural. exactly. C3. 
or even something like A6, even if it's not the best, it deserves some attention to try to get the two bishops. C3. Is there a move knight D4 maybe? Uh, I was thinking just B takes C3 in the game, followed by knight D4. And uh, without sacrificing anything. Because knight D4, I mean, if I take on B2... You lose a piece, you're right. That's very correct. So, knight e4. Hmm. Probably bishop e7, but then you take with the knight on c3. But still, the pair of bishops yeah, is, are good for uh, for black. So, I'm not sure which move order exactly, but probably bishop yeah, e7. Just take the pawn. Interesting yeah, yeah. Shouldn't be worse for white, I guess. So c3, but I'm more concerned with b takes, followed by knight d4 and queen h5 maybe. I mean, yeah. it feels like uh, black has not developed uh, very effectively. But both options are interesting, so castles. Then uh, white decided to castle, and um, which makes a lot of sense. And now that the knight is no longer pinned, I think this knight a5 move is really smart. Because uh, knight c4 suddenly is not possible, as we realized during the stream. It's not so easy to, to understand, because uh, after this move, um, knight takes c4, there is a6, knight a5, a takes b5, and the a2 pawn will fall. So... How, how did that happen? Rook c1 you inserted, yeah? Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, accidentally inserted rook c1. So here after castles, castles, oh. knight a5, knight takes c4, oh, I don't... Okay. Mm. So it goes directly to the end of the line. So maybe I should just press this, yeah, this should be better. So here, knight a5, a b5, knight b3, no, this is not the same position. So knight takes c4 immediately. No, no, not here. It's a different move yeah. order. Oh. So knight c4. Oh, okay. Knight c4 immediately. Why wasn't it played? A6. A6, yeah. Knight a5. I guess just queen a5. But then. Hmm. Oh, but also a b5, knight b3, bishop b6. Yeah. Yeah, I actually didn't check it during the actual game because we got the update each time with two moves in a row and we, we skipped uh, some moves sometimes. So, yeah, here it's not so easy to to say whether or not it's better... Uh, yeah, not easy to assess this position. It's better than the game. But probably black should be fine, yeah? With two bishops. Despite all these pawns looking uh, a bit weak. So, rook c1. And now... Uh, what do we have in this position? Yeah, he, he didn't play a6, yeah? Yeah. What, what looked like a6 looked promising to me. Yeah. So... So... Rook c1 instead of knight takes c4. Then a6 uh, is a move we wanted to... We were thinking of with knight takes c4 being an idea for white here. Yeah. Uh, but then we decided that, um, I mean, while analyzing it, we thought it was okay for white. But then we realized that here, uh, after knight takes a5, black doesn't have to take back on a5. He can just go like in the game, bishop e7. Or even to b6, and the knight is uh, in trouble, then a2 will fall. So, yeah. It seems like knight c4 is not working, but I believe Karyakin did not play a6 because of this variation. And now something... No, not this one. Actually... Actually, here I'm not too sure anymore. Knight takes c4... Mm, doesn't look too challenging, right? Yeah, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. So, a6 was definitely one of the... One of the challenging options that uh, black could uh, could have played, but bishop takes c4 looks kind of forced. And then, yeah, here, probably something involving knight c4 and then trying to play 
against the two bishops. But it feels like black should be fine. I don't know. Yeah. I really bishop e7, yeah. find it difficult to understand. Bishop e7 or even b6. I don't know. I'm just developing. So, it, it's it's very hard to understand uh, when, after ah knight a five yeah and uh, let's say knight c six is kind of an idea in some positions and if the bishop goes to d seven they're knight b seven well. I, I really can't say that uh, that it looks tempting for white. I mean, let's say for example I go queen e8, and uh, queen e8. Okay, you're not threatening anything. But, yeah. Uh, oh, maybe bishop e3. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's not it's not that uh, problematic. You could, you could have played bishop e3 immediately. Yeah? Ah, that's correct. Yeah, you're right. Threatening the rook, and then if you take, I take on a5. And, well, uh, not, not yeah. yeah, I just remembered uh, what I wanted to say at the beginning that uh, I didn't really eat lunch, so this is kind of a challenge for me. I was trying, I wanted to analyze this game very quickly and then uh, go rewarding myself with lunch. So, uh, here, a6 was definitely an interesting option for black that Karyakin decided to pass. And uh, bishop d7 is, is the more solid uh, alternative because you just develop. a6 has the problem that it does not develop a piece, but it does force white to give up the second bishop. And then black will truly have the, the bishop pair advantage. Pair of bish. Yes, the pair of bish. So bish to, bish to d7. Yeah. Queen and now takes and... Yeah, I was only calculating queen e2 during the game. But queen c2 looks even more uh, flexible. Yeah. And, um. Not well. Oh, it was. Ah, no, no, sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm missing something. a6. Oh, yeah, he played bishop e7. Yeah, a6 was not played, and he played bishop e7. But now I'm wondering even more, so. a6 really looks good, I mean. And after bishop c4 to get the pair. I guess he doesn't he didn't want to allow this, but I'm not sure why. So, if anyone is intrigued, feel free to check uh, with your own engine or watch one of the other uh, recaps where people actually summarize the engine evaluations. So here, rook c1, and um, what do we have? Mm. Bishop e7 was, was a very logical move because uh, it prepares a6, prevents knight c4 all the same, and white has to spend uh, his move uh, developing the queen, which is not the most comfortable. So we spend most of the time analyzing queen e2, but queen c2 I think is more precise, uh, having looked at uh, the position, because in this variation with, uh, with bishop d7, after queen e2, I was thinking... Yeah, that here black is fine, completely fine, yeah? Yeah. It feels uh, like after bishop d7... Knight d4, bishop a6, um, Knight d4, bishop a6, yeah, for example. Also, bishop doesn't have to go to b5 immediately. You can go probably bishop c6 as well. It looks quite solid. But yeah. I was thinking bishop b5 is just putting pressure on white. And black might even be better uh, at some point. Yeah, rook d1. It, it, yeah, it's not so easy to find a spot for the queen. Do I have a rook c8 at some point with bishop c4 ideas? No, I don't think so. So I guess I can go queen c7 or something. But, mm -hmm. Well. The thing about this position is that it is extremely unbalanced and uh, it wasn't very easy to to understand the evaluation or even guess the moves. I failed guessing more than half of the moves in the game. So queen c2 seems a little bit uh, more accurate uh, from to me now uh, having looked at the position. 
uh, after uh, I mean uh, after having seen Carlsen playing and analyzing it so during the stream so queen c2 bishop d7 the point was that knight c4 does not work but white had an intermediate move here did you see it in the game Mm -hmm. this one I didn't see. So here, queen d7 and uh, exactly, and they're attacking the knight, and now knight c4 will come later, uh, in favor under favorable circumstances. Yeah. That compared to knight c4 immediately, which probably loses or something. Huh? What would have happened if b6? Um, if queen c3 b6, yeah, I I didn't check it. Uh, I, I'm thinking maybe. Rook d1. Yeah. There was also some knight e4 ideas, yeah? Four, those are some ideas. Maybe immediately, actually. Yeah. 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 And then if f5, rook d1. Yeah, I guess e5 is making sense. e5. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not too sure. Like we some weaknesses on the, on the light squares. If yeah. E5 e5 rook d1 yeah every single line is so difficult to evaluate yeah. so my my take is that uh, b6 is giving away some options uh, and allowing white to to perhaps try to take over the initiative and after rook fd1 it's also not so clear if he can hold on to the pawn on c4 if white wanted to play more solid so more in a solid fashion so maybe this move b6 uh, just gives white extra options that might uh, be dangerous for black so in the game he played queen d5 just protecting the knight and uh, aiming to exchange the queens in case of knight c4 which was played there, is, there are not many options for uh, white and please notice that knight e4 is no longer a possibility with the queen here so knight c4, knight takes c4, and now there is a point that which I didn't understand why did Carlsen not play rook fd1? And uh, I have some speculations, but uh, what do you think, Nico? Rook fd1. Rook fd1. Yeah. Difficult to say, actually. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there is, and uh, oh. maybe knight d two is it the move? Knight d two. Um, well, I don't think so. No, but it also loses due to rook d seven loses the pawn on c two. Exactly. So I'm not sure. Yeah, me neither. Uh, uh, but it, se it seems like, like I mean, of course, it's hard to say. But uh, during the the stream, we speculated that ninety three uh, is uh, very solid for black. I mean, I I can't say for sure, and I I decided not to check the games with the computer uh, and uh, do the recaps uh, for all the rounds and try to understand on my own, but. Knight e3 seems like the human choice, and then knight d5, and later on rook d8, f5, bishop f6, and I'm not sure if white has any serious plans to exploit the advantage. The knight on d5 is just very strong. For example, okay, let's check it. Queen b3? Sure, queen b3. Let's say in this case I can even exchange a pair of rooks. Oh, okay. And uh, let's say, for example, you take and go h3 yeah. or h4. I go b6. Yeah. It's, it's always hard to understand these positions with a uh, knight and rook versus queen or bishop yeah. and rook. Yeah. Knight f5 is an idea, yeah? I have the feeling that white might be better here. Yeah, it's possible actually. Yeah, some small initiative. So, what could be the reason? Maybe. Maybe just queen b5? No, but queen b5, queen b4, queen b2, rook b1. 
So, so let's say I just take and go rook c8 like in the game and you can't really exploit rook, the rook on d1 uh, too easily. But it, does, it still feels like an improvement over a rook on f1. Yeah, I really don't understand. It's still, still uh, not clear to me. Um, I mean, you can of course transpose to the game with rook dc1, so there is no harm in starting with this move. So. Why would Carlsen not play it first? Yeah. It's very... There might be, there might be um, some extra options with the rook on d1 because after rook c8 you can take for instance and play king e2, uh, king f1. Yeah, I agree, I agree. And after rook c2 there's rook d7. I think the main difference is this knight e3 move which uh, is probably... Um, Probably double-edged, I would say, but white will definitely be the one who ha will have the potential to be better. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't have anything wise to say about this exchange sacrifice. Not exchange, maybe it's... I asked in the stream, actually, and wasn't sure if uh, anyone answered, if it's called the Lasker exchange, uh, where you get a piece and a rook and a pawn versus the queen. But I guess we, I will have to ask again in the next stream to see if I get a, a response. Um, so, what do you think uh, is the right way for black to play after rook d1? If you were playing black, would you have just exchanged the queen? Not minding the extra tempo? Well, difficult to say. I would have thought. Yeah. So, what could be different? I mean, rook c8, king f1. Yes. Maybe, maybe, just, maybe it's just the same, more or less. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yeah, just one moment. I want to make sure that everyone can like hear us. Like um, yeah. So, um, here, knight e3 seems like the, the critical option, but. Both of us agree that queen b5 is, is safer, yeah? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so I re I'm really wondering, I'm gonna check after recording this video what was uh, being said either by Carlsen or anyone else uh, about this move who, who might have checked it deeply. So, knight c c4, queen c4. Queen c4, rook c4 is very obvious. Rook a c8, rook c1. And I thought it would be a draw quite quite rapidly. Especially actually, I thought, actually, I thought Carlson just achieved what he was aiming for. <laughs> yeah, and so but really small exactly. And uh, at first, I thought it, it. I mean, what I want to say is that the beginning, I was I was sure it was be, gonna be a draw, and then like I had to continue streaming, and I was forced to think, and I couldn't come up with moves for Black. And Carlson would just keep improving his position, but yeah. uh, I have to give uh, credit to Karyakin for finding a lot of good moves. In this position so king f1 and now f5 just uh, up until this point let's say b3 everything was normal even king f8 and now this felt like Carlsen was starting to to apply the squeeze you know h3 maybe yeah, preparing g4 yes and if g4 h6 is very interesting yeah and now a4 g4 later on maybe some f4 related idea and uh trying to get some space will definitely yield a small advantage for white if black does nothing so h6 is a very flexible move because h5 might be a target after h4 this pawn can be weak the knight can come, to the knight can come let's say from e1 to f4 later or, or to c5 but this pawn will always be weak so uh, h6 is very flexible now knight e1 is the only move i predicted in the game yeah and um yeah. 
Yeah, king e7, and now knight d3, very logical, king d8. Now you didn't understand f4. Yeah. And Karyakin's response was very smart, by the way. f4, he played h5 because... Yeah, it's because now there's no more knight, no more knight f4, and... Yeah. So now the f4 square is not available, so after any h4 ideas, yeah, this knight cannot attack this pawn, so... Yeah, I would I would prefer g4 first, right? Yeah, it was more sensible. And then maybe later on f4. Exactly. King or maybe knight f4, knight h5 or just... Yeah, just yeah. trying to improve slowly. Exactly. I think f4 was... Uh, you probably missed that black can play h5. That's my my guess. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, you wouldn't have allowed it. Yeah, now uh, Karyak can play h h5 as mentioned, so f4 is the only move that I was not very impressed by when Carlsen played it, even though I myself did not notice that h5 is, is so smart at this point when streaming and uh, Karyakin was thinking. So um, now in this position a4 is very logical, grabbing more space on the queen side. Rook d5, another smart move by Karyakin. Yeah, rook c7, but... I thought this ending would be cool, but maybe... Mm -hmm. like, um, maybe like he didn't want to allow it for some reason. Takes and king f3 and e4. Uh, but it's hard to say, yeah. It's very really hard to evaluate uh, whether or not... Which ending is equaler. This is what I like to say. It's probably not a word in English, but which one, which equal is more equal, yeah? It's never easy to say. So, what do you think? After rook d5, it's also looking quite equal. b5 is coming. Yeah, Carlsen tried to avoid simplifications with knight c5, b6. And now, uh, trying to prevent b5, he went with the knight here. I still don't understand why, the b5, why b5 wasn't played. Uh, but I guess rook b4 is an option for, for white here. Yeah. This, But still, takes. I'm not so sure what's going on. It's very hard for me to, to say. Maybe rook takes a4. Why not e takes? Uh, rook a5. Knight b8. I'm not sure. Uh, the knight is a little bit fishy. Yeah. Yeah, actually, rook b8 and rook b7. Ah. But now, can you take on a7? Maybe not so easily. So, actually, I don't like it for, for white very much. So, b takes a4 looks logical to me. But maybe there is a reason he didn't play it. So, our approach in this particular analysis and in the future ones is to pose questions rather than give answers to everyone. And uh, maybe answer some of them, but so far we're not very successful, which might be also nice. So, bishop e7 limiting the knight from going back to b4, but now knight b8 uh, is the, the logical route, let's say, to bring the knight back to the game. c6 check and d4 or e5. a5 was played once again to avoid losing the pawn on a7. Knight c6 check, king e8, knight e5. And there's not much left uh, to the position. Suddenly, no. it's think, uh, yeah. it liquidated into a very drawish. It was always kind of equal, but suddenly it's it's very drawish. Yeah. yeah. Rook c3. Then suddenly they they exchanged the rooks. Seems like uh, both didn't have a lot uh, left uh, to play for in this position. And now all they did was to repeat the moves. And uh, nothing uh, in particular happened. So overall, when scrolling through the game quickly, it seems a little bit boring to some people. I heard some people mentioning it might be boring, but um, I agree. <laughs> but I agree. However, uh, I have to mention that having spent four hours looking at the game while it was in progress, it was a very unique experience for me. 
and without the computer nothing is obvious and there there is so many there are so many questions and uh, somehow I become so curious about everything in the position and even now I feel like I understand nothing it helps me understand how much I don't understand this game and uh, it's a very nice experience you know yeah yeah when you you just try to figure out what's going on so we posed a lot of questions feel free to answer in the comments and uh yeah and in general i think part of improving in chess and in many areas is knowing to ask the right questions and trying to answer them uh, and maybe even not receiving uh, the answer uh, for a long period of time and just uh improving in the process of, of let's call it um, just trying to unveil the secrets of the positions or speculating so I hope uh, let me know what you think about this format it's a bit unique uh, and uh, I'm interested in uh, creating videos where I feel like I'm improving in the process of creating them other than uh, just uh, teaching others so if anyone likes it or dislike it feel free to mention in the comments i'd like to thank nico and he might also join me in one of the future streams if we can uh, make it happen and assuming i will also solve the sound issues from the first round so um yeah thanks a lot nico for uh, joining me here sp quite spontaneously yeah and uh yeah i hope you guys enjoyed it and if you learned something and uh want to learn some more then uh, keep watching the next videos.